fishing a soft drag at the moment just to absorb the head shakes of this fish. A very hard mouth, they throw their head around a lot. It's typical of a fish that often eats spiky foods and when they get embedded in their mouth they'll often jump around to throw them out and at the moment he's just thinking there's a, a fish embedded in his mouth and that's why he's coming up and jumping every now and again. Steve's just going to slowly wear him out. Doing really well. Yeah, you're doing well. Okay, just let him go if he wants to go. That's it. Nice. Nice work, mate. Nice work. He's gonna go again. There he is. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, okay, keep line tight. Let him go if he wants to go. Let him go if he wants to go. Yes. <laughs> Today I'm on the water in southeast Queensland. I'm fishing with Steve Johnson and I've brought him here to witness the start of the southern migration of our pelagic fishes in this part of the world. Pelagic fish are defined as those that swim with the currents and often travelling thousands of kilometres, they are truly impressive. This migration involves a variety of fast and often large fish, none of which Steve has had the opportunity to catch before. There's few fish that travel as far as our ocean-bound pelagic species. And today we're going to spend some time trying to understand these long-distance predators. But our real test, we've got to try and catch Steve a big, fast ocean fish, because he hasn't had much time to play with them out here. You ready, mate? Let's go for it, Nigel. First step, we've got to find ourselves some bait, and I reckon this is about the spot. There we go. Sound is looking good. Right here. You ready? I've come to Fraser Island in Queensland as it's uniquely positioned regards the Eastern Australian current movements and at the moment offers a great chance to encounter a variety of pelagic species. These fish like eating smaller fish, so the first job is to catch our bait. That is exactly what we want. Yeah, that's the expert at uh, that's what work, eh? Steve. I grew up in Darwin um, many years ago and um, had an opportunity in Brisbane and moved down to uh, company by the name of uh, Largo Cold Stores and I've been there for 18 years. Had the opportunity today to come out and uh, do a bit of fishing with Nigel which is, um, which is a great day I'm looking forward to. Steve recently contributed a significant donation to the Wildlife Warriors program at Australia Zoo and as such earned him a spot with us. His money will be well spent on conservation and I wanted to show him our aquatic wildlife in action. I also promised the team at Australia Zoo I would get him swimming with some of our wildlife if I got the opportunity. Over. Good work Steve. You have done well and we are going fishing. Yeah. We'll put these ones away. It's time to go and hunt something bigger. Our bait has been caught and now we've got a good run further up the island to hopefully find some bigger fish. I have my mind set on finding a billfish for Steve, but I know this can be a hit or miss option. But seeing tuna bursting through the surface and eating on the way gave me some confidence we're headed in the right direction. It's time to get serious now and start putting lures in the water. The aim of these lures though is not to hook a fish, but more to tease them closer to the boat so we can tempt them with one of our baits. It's a process Steve has to learn really quickly if we have a hope of catching a billfish. Awesome. Now we wait. What we're trying to do is attract a billfish, predominantly trying to chase a billfish right now, to come into the noise of the boat and see these and think it's part of the local bait fish population. And then we want them to anger up. So we want them to try and eat it. And because it's getting away and they can, there's a bit of mullet flesh inside those skirts so they can smell it and they taste it. They get angry, you can actually see their colors change. And they'll start wanting to eat it. And that's our, that's our cue then to start winding it back to the boat. And as it gets close to the boat, we replace the skirt with the bait. And they eat it and hopefully it all comes together. The really neat part about fishing in this area is that current that pushes past Fraser Island, in this spot, deflects and kicks in here. And the really cool part about that is a subset of the predators out there, they also come in here looking for an easy feed and it's a great time to see the food chain in action. I love trolling the waters in this place and patrolling these edges where the current kicks into the area to see what will come up for a look. In this part of the world right now, you can expect anything from marlin and tuna to mackerel. A massive manta ray and that's the beauty of a spot like this where the current feeds into it, brings the bait, it brings the predators, everything's in here following the nutrient trail and looking for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And it doesn't take long for a fired up billfish to show up behind the boat. Yeah, he's still here. He's still here. Let's get it coming. Here. Ah, oh, let it go. Let it go. Go, mate. Just get this out. Here he comes. 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 
Ah, let it go, mate. Here, here, still coming. Still coming. Okay, here. Oh, where is it? He's still here, still here. Okay, chuck it out, chuck it out. Okay, free spool, free spool, free spool, free spool, free spool. Has he got it? He might have got it. Is the line going? Line getting taken? Yeah, line's going. Okay, right. Okay, you ready? Hold on. Okay, engage. Engage here. Keep the rod down like this. Is he on? No, come on, lady. I took the bait. One that yeah, got it was away. unlucky. There's still two of them there too. We saw one, another came. What we've got to do now, really quickly get back into the game. Oh, excitement plus, <laughs> excitement plus. <laughs> How's that when you see a billfish just doing its best to yeah. eat? How long do they hold onto a skirt yeah. with no hook yeah. on it? Oh, well, let's get back in action. Well, I don't think we hurt that one. He didn't feel a hook, he just took our bait, which is a little bit frustrating. So let's get back. Missing that fish really hurt because with billfish, you never know if you'll get another chance. Well, there's our first opportunity for the day. The juvenile black marlin has come into the spread, done everything it was supposed to, and pinched our bait. That's very, very frustrating. But the good sign is the fish are here, and we have a bit of a pattern happening. <laughs> come on, mate. This process known as switch baiting for marlin needs pinpoint timing and precision from both anglers. I've thrown Steve right into the deep end and our first shot has failed. We've got a lot of work to do in short time to get it right. Ready? He's on this. That was a shot there, Steve. Hey. That was a shot there. Yeah. Nearly. Yeah, I ran out of water. When you have a marlin, when you've teased one up and you've got one coming up on your skirt, the real trick is to keep it in the clean water. So I had to turn then. They get disorientated if the wash of your motor gets in their way, they lose sight of the skirt and they very quickly get distracted and disappear. And I had to turn, but I didn't get long enough because I was going to be on dry land, which is unfortunate. But anyway, if we skirt around here, you might find it again. These missed opportunities are just starting to play on my mind. No. No, you didn't want it. Very lazy one, that one. But sometimes it's tide driven. Now these fish are just cruising past Having a little bit of a look for feed, but they're not really that active at the moment because the tide's not quite to their liking. And that can all change in minutes. So the key is, we know the fish are here. We're just going to keep going round and round until we get an active one. It's interesting looking at the reasons fish migrate and the predominant reason is to forage or eat as they move. But for some species, it's slightly different. They will find juveniles like the small black marlin we're encountering at the moment and they migrating while they eat and grow bigger, while other species like your mackerels and tunas are quite often spawning and eating at the same time. So they're staying alive, but they're also spreading their young far and wide. It's the current that becomes the lifeline for pelagic fishes. It offers easier movement and the chance to spread the gene pool far and wide, while collecting bait fish for food and survival. I've come over to this patch of water for a specific reason. There's a very distinctive current edge and it's a great place to fish. And so often we get trapped into thinking it's a specific current that holds the fish, but so often it's the interactions between different water types because that's the spot where you get the eddies, upwellings, and that's where your bait often holds. And it's no surprise that very often the predators are there as well. I'm starting to feel a lot of pressure to catch Steve the fish. So far, all I've done is shown him how to miss opportunities. I think the marlin hunt for the day has probably come to an end, but we've got a long way to drive home and there was plenty of tuna busting up this morning. So we'll see if we go and play with another pelagic species. Mate, the day's not done. A few losses, but that's it. Let's go and see if we can change fortunes. Ready? Let's go. Let's pull these in and get out of here. I'm feeling defeated as we pull the teasers in and my stress is rising as I start to think about just how I'll find Steve a fish out here. The plan now is to start moving and try to find fish as we move. Now, this morning, there's lots of signs of tuna and potentially mackerel chewing away on the local bait fish. So what we're going to do is change to metals and soft plastics and the like. Stuff that will imitate a lot of the local bait supplies that these fish are feeding on and hopefully we can get Steve onto a fish or two. The rods are re-rigged and I start formulating a plan as to where we head next. 
I push the boat on the plane and 200 meters into the trip, I run straight over the top of a billfish. I can't believe my bad luck thinking I've scared off this fish. Come here, come here, come here. Okay, just spotted a marlin and thrown a bait at it. He is eating it. There he is, he's still there. Has he still got it? You're on, you're on, grab the rod, grab the rod. Ah, oh, it's off. No, it's there, it's still there, it's still there. Okay. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woo! Okay, just keep that, let him do it, no, let him do his thing. Just let him go, let him go. Let him go, wow. Just when you think you're defeated. <laughs> so often when you think you're defeated, fish come up to surprise you. We've literally oh my God. gone to head home and driven over a fish. We still had the bait sitting there ready to go. Fish didn't spook, turned around through the bait of the fish, it's eaten it. It's a circle hook. Now Piers hooked, I'm gonna turn around and chase it. We have a fish on. Just keep going, keep going, babe. Not, not too slack, not too slack. Go, 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 wide, wide, wide. Put bend on the rod. Cool. Are you nervous now? <laughs> this is, uh, it's, it's pretty cool, cool isn't it? Sight fishing, little pelagics like marlin has to be as exciting as it gets. And when you watch them come and eat like that, Oh! He's getting airborne. <laughs> it is very, very cool. I can't believe he's just coming eating it. We've just literally <laughs> run this fish over in our boat. After the poor luck we've had today to run a fish over in your boat and it didn't spook. And we fortunately had the bait still sitting there rigged up, ready to go. Fishing a soft drag at the moment just to absorb the head shakes of this fish. A very hard mouth, they throw their head around a lot. It's typical of a fish that often eats spiky foods. And when they get embedded in their mouth, they'll often jump around to throw them out. And at the moment, he's just thinking there's a, a fish embedded in his mouth, and that's why he's coming up and jumping every now and again. Steve's just going to slowly wear him out. You're doing really well. Yeah, you're doing well. Okay, just let him go if he wants to go. That's it, nice. Keep going, keep the line tight, keep the line tight. Keep the line tight. Line tight. Nice work, mate, nice work. He's gonna, here he goes, he's gonna go again. There he is. Yes, nice. Okay, okay, keep the line tight. Let him go if he wants to go. Let him go if he wants to go. Yes. <laughs> How are those jumps? That Woo. is awesome, fellas. Look what at that. I thought I was done. What an experience. You're not done yet, mate. You're not done yet. Just get this angle right. Okay, okay, if he wants to go around the boat, like he's going to now, just let him go, all right? Relax, mate, we're about to let you go. You just caught your first marlin. <laughs> you just did it. Well done. You beauty. Before letting this one go, we give it a quick breather to make sure it's healthy. A lot of mates of mine that their tradition is your first marlin, you swim with it and release it. We're not taking this fish out of the water. We're trying to be as careful as we can with it because we want it to grow and get a whole lot bigger than this. So Steve's going to jump in. He's gloved up. And you get to release your first marlin, mate. And there's no more satisfying experience just to let him get the oxygen going and swim away. Yeah, can you get? Yep. You got him? You got the beak? Yep, yep. You got him? You sure? Okay, so it's gonna let this go a little bit. Yeah, he's starting to kick the fins are up. You see those dorsal fins going up and down like that? That's a good sign. Okay, so he's ready to go, the tail's starting to go. Give him a kiss so away. when you're ready. And Steve gets to swim with the local wildlife. You legend. Woo. You beauty. Happy customer. That's a step there. <laughs> yes, the price of persistence so often. When the fishing's tough and you get those near opportunities and misses, you just got to grit your teeth and keep going. That was brilliant. Even on the way home when you, when you might have just possibly quit and started going, keep your eyes out because you never know what's going to come past the boat. I would have quit and your patience, mate, um, come through with the goods. That was brilliant, well done. We've got tuna to catch now. Dry off, we'll go catch something else. It'd be Murphy's Law that coming here this morning, you can just about walk on tuna all the way to the Marlin Grounds. Now with the northerly starting to pump, we've seen a couple of scattered birds and the odd splash of a tuna, but they have been very evasive. Starting to look like day one might be running thin on time, mate. We've ticked one off the box. We caught your Marlin. Unless we see a tuna between here and the boat ramp, we're gonna leave a bit of work to do tomorrow. Keep going, mate. You never know, there might be another school around the corner. 
the weather has started to blow up, the birds have disappeared, and as hard as we search and look, we can't find a feeding tuna school, and it's time to slowly make our way back to the boat ramp. Day one with Steve has come to an end. Only caught one fish, and what a beauty it was. Couldn't catch our tuna, but good news is tomorrow we get to do it all over again. Pressure well and truly back on me. A, see if I can catch another marlin, and see if we can catch something else along the way and learn a whole lot more about the pelagic migration. Well done, partner. Let's get out of here and regroup. The harbour at Harvey Bay is always a welcome sight after a big day on the water, and I'm happy we're staying in such handy accommodation right across the road. It's the best part of a successful day's fishing, happily reflecting on everything that went right or starting to think about what to expect tomorrow. We decide to start extra early this morning to give ourselves more time to cover the water, get to our bait spot and then move on to the marlin grounds to find out what the morning will hold. Take the bottom one. Oh yes, put it in. That's the one, that's the one. It doesn't take long to catch bait and get lures out in the water. Now the waiting game begins with expectations of seeing more fish running high. Because he had so much fun chasing them yesterday, our plan for this morning is to see if we can catch another juvenile black marlin for Steve and then as the day wears on, we're gonna head out a little bit wider and see if we can chase a tuna or maybe a mackerel. The only thing against me today is it's getting very, very close to the full moon and typically, daytime fishing close to the full moon can see the pelagics and reef species a little bit moody. So I'll think positively and hope that's not the case. The morning wind has dropped out, but we aren't seeing any signs of predatory fish activity. It's very, very still. There's no bait activity and we haven't seen hide nor hair of a pelagic species. This isn't a good start. I am persisting here, but my enthusiasm to stay is fast waning. Marlin are definitely not playing the game this morning. In the distance I can see a pack of birds and some splashes, so I think the tuna are a little bit active. They might be calling us over. I think we'll stop trolling, see if we can catch something else. The name of the game now is to cover the water looking for tuna schools, getting as close to them as possible and then casting and fast retrieving small lures in front of fish. If you can't get close enough without scaring the school, you're in with a shot. Yeah, got him. Got one? Yep. Got him. Yes. Yeah, beauty. And that's the trick to them, Steve. They're very fussy feeders. We're playing with lures at the moment. Steve's experimenting with a plastic and I've just put on a little metal jig and I think the benefit was I had the casting distance and these fish can be so fussy the moment a boat comes close to them they very often go down and Steve hasn't quite got the casting range so the first thing he'll be doing is tying on one of these metal jigs. A lot of fish have got specific surface expressions when they feed and I'm thinking there was a school of what we call mackerel tuna. Many varieties of tuna will come into these waters to feed. They're called mackerel tuna because they have some stripes across their back. Probably not one of our most desirable eating species, but so much fun on the light gear. Great sport fish. I can hear them splashing in the background. Have a shot, Steve. That's it. They're coming to the boat, which is awesome. Might be coming up with this one. Have a look at that. What I'll do, Steve, when he gets tired enough and gets close enough, I'm going to try and tail him and quickly release and they're not the best eating fish on the planet. So it will be going back. There we have it, the mackerel tuna. They are super powerful and super fast. You just gotta look at that body shape to know. He makes his living out of traveling a long way at speed and eating all the way. Noticed holding that tuna in the boat that it's coughing up bucket loads of small bait and for that reason, we're going to try and downsize the proportion of our lures to really match that food supply that they're actively in here feeding on. And it's sometimes the key to getting fussy fish to bite. On days when the moon or whatever variable is affecting the nature of the fish, they're a little bit shy like they are today. Sometimes you've got to go lighter line classes and sometimes small offerings and it. Sometimes the key to success. We'll see how that goes anyway. Oh, that long tails. Good looking long tails too. Come on, longies. There they go, mate, there. It's an intriguing game trying to chase fast-moving pelagics. You've got to try and head them off, so you've got to work out which way they're going 
and then not get too close to them, otherwise they get spooked by the bait. So we've got a bunch of tuna working over here, birds are on them. I'm trying to get ahead of them, I'm gonna stop the boat and let Steve have a long cast into them. Hopefully we can hook one. Okay, go. Yes. Okay, go. Wind, wind, as fast as you can, wind. They're eating such small bait at the moment that even these tiny middles that we've got are not enticing them to bite. Go again, mate. We're gonna to have to rely on a silly one. Nice, beautiful, great cast. Let it sink. Now, go. The tuna were frustrating us with Steve putting lots of casts into the action. It was gonna be a case of keeping casting and hoping for one to make a mistake. That's nice! Not one, mate. <laughs> Had to happen in there eventually. Right up, it's gonna slow up a bit. Yes! How's that? Well done. How fast are those fish? How fast are they off the mark? Very quick, mate. Caught me off guard then. These schools of tuna, and very often mackerel and other pelagics that cruise with them, will often travel from way up in the tropics down to the mid-coast of New South Wales. There and back every year. That's a round trip of five to 6,000 k's. So they're very fit fish. They're used to migrating, feeding. When you hook them, they make you work for them. Steve has never caught a tuna, and this now becomes a nervous wait. Good job. Good stuff. Good stuff. How good's that? But, Here he um, comes. Good colour. Good colour. Oh, there's our mackerel tuna. First one, mate. First one, Nige. First tuna, and the mackerel tuna so often the first tuna species for many of us in our tuna escapades are a little bit easier to catch than sometimes your long tails and other species. And what they lack on the plate, they make up from the sport. Good fun, mate. Great fun. All right, we're gonna let this one go. See if we can catch another one. We will see you later. Another one done. Currents like the Eastern Australian current are so important in the full scheme of our oceans and our weather. They start by winds from the Pacific pushing a body of water towards Australia. It runs harder in the summer, it runs down the coast. It affects the migration of species like this, and even that rain that falls on your house occasionally. Tide has turned, wind has started to pick up. The bad news is that our tuna that was so active before have all but disappeared, and it might be time now, as the afternoon's wearing on a bit, start pushing back towards home and see if we can find a few schools on the way home. What do you reckon, mate? Sounds good. Bird or two in the distance there, we'll see if we can find a stray school. We're now heading towards home and targeting birds and feeding schools of fish on the way. Yeah, got him. Yes, yeah, got him. Yeah, beauty. This might be a different species, Steve. Flashing away. Oh, yes. I think there's a few mackerel. Not sure what variety yet. So you'll find plenty of different species of mackerel in here. Let's get him a bit closer and see if we can check him out. Here he is, and there's a big shark under him too, Steve. We've got a spotted mackerel. He had mates with him, sharks with him. It was all happening. Let's see if I can get him in. Thanks, mate. Beautiful. <laughs> and there, Steve, is another one of the pelagic train, the spotted mackerel. They get up to around that one, 1 1.2 meter size, for around 10 to 12 kilograms. This is a very average sized fish, travels in schools alongside those tuna, and he's welcome because here's your dinner, mate. Very nice. Well done. Well mackerel done, for nice. Steve's dinner. Well All right. This is the spotted mackerel. It's a fish that's endemic to Australian and Papua New Guinean waters. So Western Pacific Ocean fish. And there's a genetic separation between our East Coast and West Coast species. In 2005, studies showed that we were over harvesting this fish. And since then, there've been a lot of changes to the commercial fishery and our bag limits as well. So it's one we've got to look after, but just a gorgeous pelagic species. That's it, now let him go. Go, go, go. <laughs> Yes, Steve. What him? Go, okay, go. Right. Now, guide around the boat. If it hits the motor, it's gone. Guide around the boat. Good work, mate. How good is that? Good to see these. Yes. Okay, it's going to go again. It's going to go. Yes. How fast is that? <laughs> Pelagic fish are known for their speed, and he is not disappointing. How good are they to catch? All right, let's let him do his thing. Okay, he's going to go. He's going to go. Gonna go, just watch the bottom of the boat, and that's it. Oh, oh yes. 
caught yourself a mackerel as well. <laughs> you beauty. Yes. Steve has his third species on board. Spotted mackerel, you champion, mate. And we got to see it eat at the boat. They're all coming up coughing small fish up. And those little metal lures that we're using are perfect imitation. So often, you can imitate that bait supply, you stand to catch the fish. I'm busy preparing Steve's dinner for him. And we have created a monster. He's catching them left, right and centre. Don't you love the sound? What an afternoon fishing. Who would have thought someone could get so excited and have so much fun with an afternoon of fishing? Certainly not me. <laughs> Just let him run. That's awesome. Take your time. Just be patient with it. If you haven't landed mackerel before, use a gaff. They've got a super, super sharp set of teeth. I've done it a few times. I'm pretty good at grabbing the tail. Doesn't wreck the fillets. If you haven't done it before, just be very, very careful. Oh, nice one. And check out that. Steve is on fire. Another spotted mackerel. Yo, yo team! <laughs> Happy customer. With our pelagic species that have to travel a long distance in the current, you can see how well their bodies are designed to let them do that. Streamlined but powerful, big tails. Uh, their fins will often tuck together, make a very aerodynamic shape. You just gotta look at how pointy the face of this guy is. He's gonna cut through the water with ease and speed. And to finish off his dinner, check out those super sharp teeth. It was getting harder to leave with bait schools being terrorized by marauding pelagic fish. Every cast becomes met with expectations of a hookup and Steve was fast becoming addicted to these awesome fish. Oh yes, got him. Yes, got him, Steve. <laughs> you know, mates, they keep going. Oh, I love them, they're just the best little speedsters. Oh yeah, wow, listen to that. Did he have a mate? Chuck it out again, they usually come in packs, so throw it out. Have a look at that. Can't get tired of catching these absolute speedsters and just such cool predators. Those teeth that mesh together so they slice up any of the bait fish they come across. These fish love hunting at speed, and the aim is to keep lures in front of them moving as fast as you can retrieve them. Oh, here he, yeah, here he goes. Yeah, he flew at it. <laughs> That's awesome. Came like a bullet out of nowhere. He's about to go now, watch how fast he's gonna go. Oh, how's that for some speed? Just the coolest, coolest fish. Wow, he clobbered that. Right, uh, let's get this guy on the boat. Have a closer look at him. Oh yes. Worth understanding life as a pelagic fish and how well designed they are, just in terms of their coloration. Check out the top, he's got an aqua green color. Very much the color of this. So as a bird looking down, very well disguised and looking above, a silvery white, very much like the color of the sky, the brightest part of a fish's world. So from underneath, so well camouflaged, and from above, so well camouflaged. It's how you survive predation yourself. Oh, I think they've gone, mate. Might be time for us to get out of here as well. We've got a bit of work to do to get back to the ramp. Yeah. You've experienced the highs and the lows of pelagic fishing. A species that's here one day, gone the next, and then another one rolls into town. Thanks for coming on the show. You've been a pleasure, and you're welcome anytime. Thanks, Nige. Great couple of days of fishing. All right. Thank you. We will see you on the water somewhere else. I love introducing new anglers to our fishes. Steve now has a new appreciation for our migrating ocean predators, and the more of us that value these fish ultimately means the more we will fight to look after this resource. Mm -hmm.